All right, it's uh, 10 o'clock and welcome to everybody that's joined us on the line virtually here for another uh, briefing. We're having these on a daily basis and I think we've had them on a daily basis since uh, last Saturday. So without uh, further delay, I can get into it. I'm Mark Rogstad, uh, Media Relations Manager for the City of Saskatoon. And again, this morning we'll have available uh, Terry Schmidt, who's the uh, general manager of uh, construction and transportation, and our city manager, Jeff Jorgensen, who will be available to answer any other additional questions on top of uh, their initial comments and their update about uh, how the storm uh, clearing process is proceeding. So with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Schmidt, and he's got uh, some information for everybody now. Uh, good morning and thank you, Mark, and good morning to everybody joining us. Thanks again for taking the time to be with us this morning. Uh, as Mark mentioned, my name is Terry Schmidt, and I'm the General Manager of Transportation and Construction for the City of Saskatoon. So with the Priority Streets now open to traffic, our focus continues to remain on residential neighbourhoods. And great gains are being made on mobility and residential streets, and we continue to bring on additional contractors for this work. The residential clearing schedule was posted yesterday at saskatoon.ca. This is a tentative schedule and subject to change based on weather conditions and contractor availability and production. So we would ask that you check it regularly for updates. The schedule for residential snow plane was developed so that it didn't overlap with collection schedules. However, with some of the changes that may be required, there may be some instances where this is not the case. And in those situations, we're making arrangements with the contractors, to move the bins onto the driveways and then move them back onto the street after the clearing operation. Our first priority continues to be able to improve mobility to as many residents as quickly as possible. This will mean that there may be impacts on parking availability in the neighborhood when the first initial snow clearing is completed. Residents are not required to move their vehicles, but if able, cr crews will appreciate more space to complete the work and the ability to clear streets more fully. If you're unable to clear snow that's pushed against your driver or your vehicle during the first initial pass, please reach out to a friend or neighbor. And then after the initial pass, we plan for the crews to return to do some street cleanup work. As well, nighttime work might cause some noise disturbances and we apologize for that. But at the same time, this will allow us to significantly reduce schedule to complete the work. So thank you for your patience. With the huge accumulations of snow during the clearing operations, it may result in some snow piles. And for your safety and the safety of your children, we would ask that no one climbs on these snow piles or builds tunnels through them as the weight of that snow could be very dangerous. And for an update of what has occurred in the last few days and overnight, as of this morning, residential street clearing has been completed in five neighborhoods, Kensington, Stonebridge, Eastview, Holiday Park, and Brighton. Clearing is underway in an additional six neighborhoods, Dundonald, Rosewood, Hampton Village, Lake Ridge, Arbor Creek, and Evergreen. And in addition, today work is scheduled to start in six more neighborhoods, Wildwood, Bona Vista, Mayfair, Silverwood Heights, Arendale, and Montgomery. Our schedule has work starting in all neighborhoods on or before November 20th. We continue working on snow clearing in, in school zones as well. The windrows or snow ridges may remain in the parking lanes. Removal of these windrows is underway at the 100 plus school locations across the city. And in the meantime, we ask that everyone exercise extreme caution while navigating the school zones when the snow ridges may impact pickup or drop off as well as sight lines. Much work has been completed, but we know much work still remains to be done. We're throwing everything we brought at this to help you and your family get where you need to go safely. We're working around the clock day and night and we've hired local contractors to help you get there faster. That's as many as nearly 300 crew members and counting with plows, sanders, graders, tandem loaders, and dump trucks. We'll be working simultaneously throughout the entire city, focused on beginning with the streets worst affected and clearing residential streets in all neighborhoods in a sequence where the streets carrying the most traffic or are strategically located are addressed first. Our crews will be going to back lanes as well, with the initial focus being on those back lanes with garbage pickup. So once again, I want to thank you for helping your neighbors and remaining patient during the citywide snow cleanup and for staying safe around the snow removal equipment on our, on our streets. Please remember that road conditions are still considered hazardous due to the snow accumulation and the layer of ice underneath the snow. 
However, our crews are making great progress on this as well, as they're sanding and salting to treat the ice as the roads are being cleared from the snow. Saskatoon Transit is operating with regular schedule with a few minor disruptions on several routes. And we'd encourage you to use Transit app, Google Transit on desktop, or visit saskatoon.ca to check on the transit schedule, routes, and any service alerts when planning your trip. Please also visit saskatoon.ca slash snow for information about the residential snow clearing schedule. And as I mentioned earlier, please check it regularly for updates. Links to our news releases, which provide valuable information on our progress and other service updates, and news conferences on our YouTube channel, as well as general information on our priority road system, snow clearing program, and some questions you might have. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Jorgensen, our city manager. Great. Thanks very much, Terry. Um, and I, I have had a chance to uh, inspect city streets throughout the week and did spend a few hours out on the road this morning and boy the city looks fantastic so thank you uh, Terry to you uh, your team at, at roadways everybody involved and all of our contract partners uh, for their round-the-clock work uh, during and uh, and through the cleanup from this uh, significant blizzard um, now of course we haven't gotten to the whole city but you know that you can just tell anybody driving around the city our city's absolutely moving. Transit's been fully up and running for a while now. Uh, the priority streets have been open um, very shortly after actually our normal service level targets. Uh, you know, we didn't quite hit our service level targets, but considering the volume of snow, I, I think the response has been phenomenal. Um, the, you know, and as Terry said, now the focus is those residential streets. We totally understand the, you know, many people struggling in residential streets. And uh, so that was the focus of my inspection this morning. Um, one comment uh, about um, what citizens can expect through this operation is really this is this is one of the fastest moving um, operations uh, that I've seen. It, this is a real blitz approach to the city. And our goal, as Terry mentioned, our goal is mobility. It's kind of blitzing the city, all the all the equipment we can get on the road to blitz the city and get mobility restored in all neighborhoods, all crescents and all neighborhoods. And, and typically we, we really strive for excellence and coordination to make sure, you know, things are perfectly coordinated with garbage and recycling days and, and we don't miss scheduling days and things like that. And this is a little different operation than we're used to seeing. It, the focus is that blitz approach and so there's going to be changes to schedule. A uh, good example last night was Evergreen. We thought we'd be finished Evergreen. Um, didn't, didn't get as far into Evergreen as we thought we were. So now we need to bring contractors back into Evergreen to, to finish it. So there's going to be, be those operational changes that we see on a daily basis. Um, but the approach so far that, that uh, get as much equipment in as many neighborhoods as we possibly can absolutely paying dividends. We really appreciate everybody's patience and understanding as, as we work through the city. And what I can say from, you know, overall, from what I've been seeing from the results, uh, local streets, lanes, the, the entire uh, neighborhood level approach, we have achieved the objective. It is, it is a fast moving operation and it's been extremely effective at restoring mobility. And I just want to remind everybody, I know we've said it a number of times in our media approaches before and the news releases and whatnot, but we will be back to pick up snow from residential streets. Um, you know, the windrows that are along the curb, um, there's large piles of snow in some cases that either the either citizens put up or the city or contractors have put up. We will be back to pick up the snow that's in the way. Um, so, you know, we have to get mobility restored first. That's our first priority. And then we will, uh, we will take more time after that to come back and start moving that snow because it can't stay there all winter. Um, so, Mark, with that, I'll turn it back to you and we'll open it up for questions. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jeff and uh, Terry. So far, we don't have any questions from our friends in the, uh, in the local media. So, um, we'll just maybe give them a, a moment or two and see if there's anything else that they would like to ask. But uh, with that, I know that... Um, Perhaps Jeff, uh, we were sharing a safety message too about uh, the snow piles and um, just a general sort of uh, reminder and a warning about safety around those. Maybe you can go over that. Yeah, thanks, Mark. 
And just like Terry mentioned, uh, you know, those snow piles are, are magnets for kids. It looks like such fun to, you know, go and dig a tunnel in them and, and whether the pile was put up by the city or a contractor or, or even citizens themselves, they're actually very dangerous. And I've asked our communications team to uh, put together some, you know, a, a campaign to make sure that that message gets out. But, you know, we, we really have to approach this as a community. They, you know, the old saying, it takes, you know, it takes a community to raise a child. Um, it's a case where, you know, this is, this is all of our responsibility. So like I said the other day, anybody that sees, um, um, anybody that sees, you know, kids playing in a, in a large snowbank, you know, make sure you get them, get them away from that. Cause tunneling is, it's not a case where somebody could get hurt. It's a case where somebody could actually get killed. So, and, and if, while we're waiting for questions, Mark, um, one thing I noticed in, in my um, inspections these last few days um, is the placement of garbage containers and recycling bins. Um, I, you know, it's really awkward, I know, for people because we're not used to these conditions with this amount of snow uh, on these residential streets. But where I've seen, you know, containers, for example, on the wrong side of a windrow, and I, I look at them and, you know, that ridge of snow that's maybe on, on the street that are from a grader putting it up, somebody leaving their container on the sidewalk instead of out on the street or right, you know, tucked up right beside a, a big snow bank in a way that, that I would look at it and say, well, there's no way the truck can get there. So maybe just the reminder, reminder to everybody when you're putting out your containers, um, just think, kind of think about it from the truck's perspective that it was a big piece of equipment. They've got to get reasonably close to the container and then they can extend that arm to grab it. But if you just kind of think of things from the uh, truck driver's perspective, whether it's a contractor or a city operator, um, and get that bin in a place where we can pick it up, and that make that'll make sure that it doesn't uh, doesn't get messed.